Welcome, Armchair Generals, Weekend Warriors, and Saturday Soldiers alike, to a brand new Let's Play, Men of War. Published in 2009 by 1C Company and developed by Bestway and Digital Mindsoft, this real-time tactics game is a successor to the game Faces of War, and has spawned the following sequels. Assault Squad, a version of the game focusing solely on the multiplayer skirmishes with absolutely no single-player campaign. Red Tide, a campaign set during the missions undertaken in the Black Sea by the Russian Black Sea Marines, including the sieges of Odessa and Sevastopol. I don't have much experience with this game beyond the first mission. Vietnam, much like Red Tide, but with a Soviet and US campaign in the region which features a mix of stealth, assault, and stealth assault missions. I have less experience with this than with Red Tide. And Condemned Heroes, following the battles of the notorious Russian penal battalions, I cannot say anything about this game as I never played the game. And Assault Squad 2, a reimagining of the original Assault Squad, the same situation as Condemned Heroes. Now, I plan on playing all of these games in time, although Assault Squad and Assault Squad 2 will most likely be used to give you guys something to watch while I prattle on. The game itself focuses wholly on military tactics and special operations, and as such, does not feature conventional strategy odds and ends such as base building, research, or resource gathering. Unit recruitment features in multiplayer but is rarely used in single player. Much like in real life, the forces that you start the battle with are usually the forces you end it with, should they be so lucky. As much as this is a strategy game, its most notable feature is it acts much like a simulation driven world. Examples of this include, but are not limited to, each soldier and vehicle, be they tanks, jeeps, or a venerable 88mm gun, has an infantry and a weapon, or several, which holds a finite amount of ammunition and supplies. Looting the dead, both yours and theirs, is the key to winning. Each vehicle and emplacement is operated by soldiers who can enter and leave at will. This leads to the rather hilarious pretense that every soldier knows how to drive and operate every part of every vehicle in the game. Each vehicle has important components that can be damaged, destroyed and repaired, instead of a health value. This adds a high level of realism to the game, as a lucky strike can take out a tank. Or you can be, you know, beating at a tank with an anti-tank gun for minutes before even scratching the paint. Line of sight is calculated accurately, instead of a bubble of omniscience around your vehicles and soldiers. You have a cone of vision with dead zones where you cannot see behind or beyond your feasible reasons of sight. As an example, the driver of a tank will have a much more narrow field of vision than an infantry mineral. Buildings have fully modelled modeled interiors that soldiers can freely navigate, though they do often need you to hold their hands. Bullets and shells can be blocked by solid objects, though most solid objects can be taken care of with the appropriate charge of high explosives. Almost everything, from dead bodies to the ground you walk on, can be blown up. This can create cover for infantry or be used to bomb tanks although this happens very rarely. It can also be used to deny cover to your enemy, but be careful though, that cover you're blowing up could be used by your own men if the enemy counterattacks. And another major thing is fire spreads. So if, say I blow up a fuel tank next to a forest full of infantry, then the fire will spread and hurt them. Now all this adds to create a distinct and dramatic story for the game, and does, not s and does set the atmosphere very well. You don't feel like you're playing a Command and Conquer game or a Company of Heroes game but also leads to semi-tedious micromanagement. Now then, all games have cons, and this one is no exception. I found in my travels that the AI's pathfinding is derpy at the best of times, and in the worst, it is downright, downright retarded. The AI has no threat identification, and as such, infantry, if not micro properly, oftentimes run to their doom. What do I mean by threat identification? They don't crest a hill, see enemies, and then automatically take cover and start firing they keep going to their waypoint. This does get extremely frustrating, if, particularly if you're not paying attention and you think an area has been cleared. Also, even on the easiest difficulty, which I will be playing on, this game can be downright brutal, although consequently this forces you to think out your moves extremely carefully. Another consequence though is this leads to extremely long missions, and as such I will actually be breaking the missions down into objectives. So I'll complete one batch of ob objectives, and then I'll move on to another batch. Because the last, well, the first time I played this mission and recorded it, although I had to scrap the recording because the output file wasn't very good, it ended up being that the mission took me an hour and 15 minutes. Not like the kind of video I would like to upload anymore. 
And finally, the voice acting is downright awful, and the cutscenes are tedious and oftentimes quite pointless. Although those were the cons, and they are very valid ones, although compared to the pros of this game and how brilliant and innovative it is, I do think it is far outweighed. The two final comments on the game that I'll leave you guys with is that don't expect to see Normandy or Leningrad or Stalingrad in this game. This game focuses on the lesser known battles of the Second World War in the Russian and North African theatres, which I find re refreshing as they are often glassed over for the famous battles of Normandy and Stalingrad. Uh, the tank battle at Kursk, the invasion of Poland, the bypassing of the Maginot Line, etc, etc. If you want to see these battles though, find me a mod that includes them and I will play them for you. Now the last comment is a quote from Alec Mir of Rock Paper Shotgun. This is an organic strategy game where others are artificial. In other words, everything you need is on the battlefield as a pre-existent genuine element rather than a magic power upgrade, a weapon upgrade that brings into existence out of nowhere, or a capture point with an ethereal timer floating above it. Now then, enough talking, let's get this shit done.